on, just take somebody by the hand. Oh, yes. Lord has done it his way. Um, in the name of Jesus, shall we move to the word of God very quickly? Numbers 32 and 23. 32 and 23. God is good to us, isn't he? God is real good to us. And he's moving mightily throughout all of the land. Amen. <clears throat> Numbers 20, 32, 23, if you have it, say amen. amen. Come on, let's read it together. Read it again. Be sure. Read it once again. Can we say amen? amen. Turn to somebody and tell them you cannot, you cannot. Sin, sin successfully. successfully. Turn to somebody else and tell them you cannot, you cannot. Sin, sin successfully. Maybe you ought to try somebody else. Turn and look at him and tell him, listen, you cannot sin successfully. Oh, you can't get away with it. You can't get away with it. I don't care what you do, you can't get away with it. You cannot sin and get by. I, I, you know what? You can't sin and think you're going to get away with it. Oh yes, I'm going to tell you something here. The Lord is speaking to my heart and I'm going to move very quickly. But I want you to understand that you cannot sin and get away with it. Somebody say, did you hear what I said? Yes, I heard what you said. You can't get away with sinning. All right, in the word of God, we see here that Moses has told the children of Israel if they do not go along with the other children to regain the land of Canaan, the promise that be sure your sins will find you out. Now we're not going to go back to the tribes and the line and find out that you stayed on this side of Jordan when we asked you to cross over. The Lord has told me to tell all of the children of Israel to go over and to possess the land. Now we don't want you two tribes to stay back along this side of Jordan because you decided that you want to live on this side of Jordan and not go and help us possess the land. If you do, your sin is going to find you out. I want to share with you something also out of the book of Jeremiah. The Lord spoke to my heart on last night before sleeping about this. He kept saying your sins will find you out and kept talking about the message to me. And there was a startling event that happened in Jeremiah chapter number 28 and we're not going to read it to you. But when you have time, please, by all means, read it. And there was a young man here in the word of God who had a spirit of prophecy. And this young man by the name of Haniah or Hanea, he had a spirit of prophecy on him. But you've got to realize that God knows everything about us. He knows where he's working. And he knows when he wants to work. That's why as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. It behooves us to follow the move of the Spirit. 
If we don't follow the move of the Spirit many times, we end up in iniquity, we end up transgressing, we end up angering the Lord, we end up in the wrath of the Lord. And I, just like you, I don't want to be in the miserable wrath of the Lord. I'm no match for the power of God. No kind of way is flesh any match for divinity. There's no way that we can escape the hand of our God. Here the young man had a spirit of prophecy but he had the wrong spirit. Uh, Jeremiah was prophesying one way that God was going to allow King Nebuchadnezzar to come in and overtake the land. But the other young man he had a prophecy of favor saying the Lord is going to deliver us out of the hands of Babylon and he's going to bring back the captives, bring back the son of the king and bring back all of the vessels of the house of God. While Jeremiah was under great affliction by the power of God because he walked around with a yoke around his neck and his hands in stocks and said that God's going to bind us and God's going to send us away captives and we're going to be servants to the man the king Nebuchadnezzar because he is God's servant he kept preaching to them surrender to him and let us live at least let us not fight him since God has given him the battle let's not fight him but let's go along with him and let's go and have him as our king and be his servants but still we'll have our lives as a prey the other young man came before the king and told King Zedekiah this prophet is not a true prophet the spirit of prophecy from God is not in him he is false he is a liar hear the true word of God thus saith the Lord God have you ever recognized how many times you can get a thus saith the Lord God when you really need a word from the Lord somebody will come along and prophesy unto you thus saith the Lord God unto you don't fear honey because if it's true it's going to come to pass don't worry about it take it for what it is worth and be glad about it because if it is so God's going to bring it to pass in your life but if it is not so God will not allow anybody to make him out of a liar God will always stand true and if God doesn't want to do a certain thing you cannot hold God under duress you can't make him you can't prophesy him up you can't whip him up you can't make him do nothing he doesn't want to do if God does not want to bless you in a certain kind of way he will not bless you if God doesn't want to elevate you to a certain thing he will not elevate you if God doesn't want to bring something to pass in your life we he will not do it and we've got to recognize just to give him thanks because all things are working together for my good but some people will come and try to invoke the Spirit of God and say they have the Spirit of God but honey your sin will find you out this young man was in the wrong place at the wrong time picked up the wrong spirit and ran with the wrong message and gave the wrong prophecy and said God told him to tell the king but sometimes when you look at your life you can tell when you're running backwards when you're running off course and when you're not living what you're supposed to live and be sure if you're hanging around bad company the Bible stands true evil communications will corrupt good manners you will be corrupted yeah go ahead and hang around with dogs and you will have fleas go ahead and lay down in the gutter and you're gonna come up stinking yeah you can't get in the sow and get into the pen and wallow with the pigs and think you gonna come up smelling like a rose it don't work like that your sin will find you out yeah everybody's gonna know if you don't hurry up and repent God's gonna pull back the discernment on you some old sister some old brother gonna walk up to you and give you a long list of where you've been what you've been doing and who you've been doing it with your sins will find you out the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout all of the earth discerning the good beholding the good and the evil you got to recognize that God is not playing and your sins will always come to the forefront
But one thing we don't want sin is an embarrassment. It's one thing to be caught in sin, but it's another thing to be exposed. Where everybody knows, everybody hears, everybody's got to report. I'm not talking about some of these gossiping kind of people that just put lies and hatch lies and try to make up and put all kind of fantasies. I'm not talking about them. That's an evil, unclean spirit. There's some people like the prophet said, even in the book of Solomon through the Proverbs, some people just sit down and hatch lies. They can imitate a lie. They can make you whatever they want you to be. Yeah, and they can say you said, he said, and she said, and you ain't said nothing because you wasn't with he and you wasn't with she. But they just sit down and hatch up all kinds of lies. But when you look at the situation, you can discern the spirit that's in the person. When you sit down and talk to a person for a while, you know if you're sitting with a messy individual, you know when you're sitting down with garbage, honey, because anytime you're in the room with garbage, it starts stinking. It'll start stinking after a while and you'll know what you're sitting with. Don't nobody want to be around a garbage can. The first thing you're supposed to do is put the garbage out. The first thing you're supposed to do is spray the air. Disinfect around you, honey. Let the Holy Ghost tell the Holy Ghost, perfume me down. Lord, protect me. Because I'm sitting here with some garbage and I don't want to be a part of the trash. I don't want to be a part of the rubbish. The sin will find you out. Yes, yeah, sin will find you out and then expose you. And that's why there's an element for the Christian child of God who really wants to do right. There's a way out of sin. Yeah, we get caught in sin. Yeah, I know you think you're perfect, but you still are a sinner saved by grace. Yeah, I know we're on our way up. I know the Lord is lifting us up where we belong. But yes, yeah, some of you still making short steps and slips and slides. And if it wasn't for the grace of God, if it wasn't for his covering us up if it wasn't for his mercy we would be in trouble today because some people would not forgive you if it wasn't for righteous men and women who could hear your confession and pray for you and build you up and put you back on the main track and send you on your way you'd be in trouble today because your sins will find you out there's one thing about it you cannot sin successfully nobody has been been able to do that nobody has been able to sin successfully one day one moment the hour that you think not everything is out in the open everything is exposed somebody gets a vision somebody gets a dream the dreamer and the visionary get together the man of God the woman of God calls you out good God from Zion and all of a sudden you got to throw up your hand and say I am the man I'm the one who it was that had and was in a situation I didn't need to be in but see here your sin cannot in any kind of way be hidden because God exposes sin God cannot stand sin even on the child of God God cannot stand us to be in sin he'll do everything that he can he'll send a prophet he'll send a warning he'll send a dream he'll send a message he'll send a revival he'll do anything he has to do to get his children back on the right track look at the love of God he doesn't want us to end up in hell he doesn't want us to end up in torment he'll do everything he can do to put our feet back on the right track so that we will not be eternally damned and eternally lost and go there and spend eternity with a new body that will be tormented for forever and forever and forever God wants life for you and I that's why we cannot get away with our sins when you sin you got to realize something else that your sins will always have evidence in your body and that will show up on you a lot of us have start sinning in our bodies and our thinking is all wrong and sin in our thoughts immediately our bodies will tell on us our bodies will tell us that we are in sin just start unbelieving just start 
doubting God just start grumbling and complaining have you ever been around a grumbler and a complainer and a discontented person you ever been around somebody frustrated and somebody that doesn't have anything never good to say all of a sudden the contortion is on their face they've always got a frown never got a smile never got no joy their eyes look sad they start gray and early all of a sudden their wrinkles in their forehead they always got a dark black countenance around them They're always gloomy they got stomach problems they got digestive problems they got sickness they got some kind of gas they can't digest their food properly honey just keep on being an unbeliever and that unbelief is sin and the Bible said that unbelief is worse than a witchcraft worker it's worse than somebody who doing you it's worse than somebody doing voodoo to not believe God is faithful and God cares and God loves you and God understands is worse than somebody uh, sitting down working up black magic having a seance uh, demonizing and conjuring up devils is worse than somebody who's a necromancer calling up the dead it's worse than somebody uh, palm reading and reading a crystal ball and telling lies for your future uh, it's worse than sitting down reading he leaves and playing with demons uh, and walking in the midnight hours uh, rambling in the graveyard trying to call up evil spirits uh, when God sees unbelief uh, honey your sin will find you out uh, we gonna know it because your body's gonna tell on you uh, your body's gonna start acting funny with you uh, your body's not made for unbelief uh, your body cannot harbor unbelief your body can can't harbor faithlessness your body can't harbor doubt it responds in a nervous kind of way you'll start losing your hair losing sleep insomnia rushes in you lose your nights of rest you go to bed tired wake up tired you don't know which way to turn you lost you come in a chapter first chapter of James verse number eight all of a sudden you're a double-minded man unstable in all of your ways honey your sin will find you out your body will expose you your body will tell you I'm a sinner I'm sinning against my body your sin will find you out don't play with it honey you'll not be able to do it successfully you'll start being angry complaining you'll start doing all kinds of things Things. Have you ever seen people who have sinned in their body? Who smoke? What happens to the body? The lungs get disease, alcohol. What happens to the body? Other kind of failures develop. You cannot sin successfully and get away with it. It will leave its scar. It will leave its wounds. It will leave its victim some kind of way in a time or element of despair not only that but it will sin is in your life it will bring down and show forth in your character yes take for example an alcoholic the worst thing about alcoholism is not only about the content of the alcohol that is in the body that destroys the elements of the body but notice what it does it destroys a person's character this kind of sin against the body destroys the person's will it takes the most precious possession he has the will to say no it destroys his ability to walk away from it destroys his perception it destroys his ability to do right it destroys his perception to do what he knows he needs to do it robs him he's less stopped he's raped from all of his will he can want to live free and want to live right but his addiction will make him and drive him and cause him to lose his character his morals will be depleted
it will rob him of his character your sins will find you out when you are addicted to any kind of habit and any kind of thing that you cannot have control of you have lost your will you can cry and say I don't want to drink no more but that addiction will call you to be a thief and a robber and a murderer over just a bottle of alcohol it'll make you rob from your family it'll make you steal money from your children it'll make you lose your home your wife it will rob you of everything that you had decent it will steal your very job it will steal your friendships and look close associations it robs you of all of your respect all of your dignity your sins done in secret they will rob you of your character when you've lost your character then people want to wonder about you they can't trust you they won't leave you unattended they'll keep their eye on you they don't want to be around you oh honey sin is dangerous and sin will find you out you cannot sin successfully neither can you sin and it won't affect your children yes you say I'm grown I can do what I want to do but the Bible says you can't sin successfully oh parents without it affecting your children the book of Exodus cries out it'll move down to the third and fourth generations yeah go ahead you said don't do as I do but do as I say do oh you got to change that you ain't got no Bible for it what you do your children will do and what you do say your children will say you can spank them all you want to you can tell them don't do that baby don't go this way this is the wrong direction but sin will move down to the third and fourth generations and destroy your children what you do privately saying I don't drink around my children I don't smoke around my little Sally I don't do those kind of things around Johnny honey sin has never been a secret agent it is a polluting power oh yeah what David did in secret affected all of his family he went out on the porch and saw Bathsheba and brought in her unto himself David laid with her did not the word say and after he had her and she became pregnant he sent forth and had her husband murdered Uriah now that's one murder and one baby and one account of adultery God came in and told him and sent a man of God and compared him and said this man had a little sheep and this was the only sheep that he had and he loved the sheep so well till the sheep sat down at his table he brought the sheep up with his children and he fed the sheep everything that he ate and he even let the sheep lie all night in his bosom trying to show David how much this man loved his one little lamb but a rich man came along who had many sheep and had a stranger coming in and he took that poor man's little lamb that he raised up from a youth and fed from his table and that slept in his bosom he took that man's only little lamb and killed it and dressed it for his company he said King David what should we do to the man David rose up in anger and said kill him he's a no good low down dirty dog kill that man he took that man 
hands on this sheep when he could have took one of his own. He said, David, God sent me to tell you that thou art the man. You are the one. David was smoked in his bosom. He bowed down and repented. He laid prostrate before the God of glory and said, wash me. Cleanse me. Wash me with hyssop and I shall be whiter than snow. I want you to thoroughly, thoroughly wash me, Lord. I'm filthy, I'm unclean, and I'm undone. Create in me a clean heart, oh God, and renew a right spirit in me. I want another spirit, cause the spirit that I have is going to take me down, Lord. Please, Jesus, you are my shepherd. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Though I walk through the valley and the shadow of death, I'll fear no evil, for thou art with me. Oh, Jesus, I need you. I need you, Father, to help me. Oh, yeah, God heard him. And God said, David, I love you. You're quick to repent. When I tell you you're wrong, you're quick. To say, Lord, I won't cover up. Yes, I am exposed. Yes, I'm filthy and I'm unclean and I'm undone. But God, you can help me. That's why I love you, David. When you do wrong, and I tell you you're wrong, you're ready to make the wrong right. You're ready to do right. You're ready to cast off your sin and say, Lord, save me. Yes, but listen. He rose up with victory. But realize this. God has a principle in his word. That you reap what you sow. David had got the mercy. God reconciled him back unto himself. God loved David. But he had to pay for what he did. He said, now David, I love you. Now I'm chastising you. I want you to realize you got to reap everything that you sow. You're going to sow in mercy. You're going to reap in mercy. But you've got to reap every seed that you plant. It's coming up again. The Bible said, be sure your sin will find you out. Yes, was David forgiven? Yes, he was full. Full of God's mercy. David was happy on his way. And the news came. Your baby is dying. David rushed in before God. Laid there and wouldn't eat a thing. But the baby still died. Oh yeah, but that's not enough. God say you gotta reap what you sow. Oh yeah, you say a life for a life. But God don't say one plus one. God will say one will chase a thousand and two ten thousand. The way God's reaping system is it's much different than us I may slap you one time but God will let you slap me ten times good God from Zion you got to reap just what you saw you can't sin successfully that's why you see here and none stood there about his bedside and conjured up a demonic plot sin came on to me I'm sick and in need of bread these are sisters and brothers and the daddy's name is David the same thing David did Amnon did to a sister Tamar the same nasty thing Ammon did to a sister Tamar he called in Tamar like David called in Bathsheba he laid with Tamar like David laid with Bathsheba Good God from Zion, David heard the news cause his daughter didn't come out with the virgins and all the royal colors, they all had light 
flowing colors garments with all kind of light flowing colors saying I'm a virgin before the eyes of the Lord when she was not in the court march he inquired where is she where is Tamar somebody says she's rent her garment she's running here to herself when her brother got the news Absalom rose up good gut from Zion another one of David's children you'll have to read from the third to the fourth generation good God from Zion uh, you cannot sin successfully uh, and then he said listen uh, come on and go to the sheep shearing party uh, I'm going down here uh, or oh David let's uh, let my brother dad uh, let him go with me to the sheep shearing uh, we're gonna have a party uh, down there at the sheep gate uh, in the fields uh, outside of Bethlehem uh, let let him go daddy please after he begged for him to go Absalom slew him killed his brother they stabbed him several times in the height of the party uh-huh, that's three children no now that's four that's a baby a daughter and then there was Amnon and now it's Absalom oh good God from lion when will it all be over David heard the news and said my God my God what's going on with my family he said listen David you gotta reap just what you sow yeah you gotta reap David cried cried and cried for Ammon and all of a sudden his oldest child Absalom rose up against his daddy and said I'll kill you if you don't run for your life I'll take it from you he rose up and said listen I want your phone look at here now that's another child all of a sudden David is looking around for him looking outside the back gate of the throne they open up a king's passageway and David the old man is running for his life David the giant killer is running for his life David the one that killed the Amalekites is running for his life David can't stand before his own son cause he's won the whole kingdom on his side he's got 500 men David the one that slew Goliath David the great anointed musician is running for his life or you can't sin successfully you can't sin in the cupboard and don't think it's gonna affect you on the outside you can't sin in the back alley because God will always know about it you can't hide your dirt under the cupboard and now this rascal is about ready to kill him say I kill you if I see you I'll kill you I will murder you good God from Zion you can mess up so with your children till they won't have no kind of respect for you they'll rise up in your face and dare you to hit them they'll rise up in your face and dare you to speak anything against them they'll hit you up against your face knock you up against the wall and dare you to breathe you better watch yourself your sins will they'll find you out they'll find you out go ahead and do your dirt but you gonna have to reap everything that you sow now he's on his way and now here comes the captain of his army he said yeah we're gonna get rid of this fast flashing pipsqueak David we're gonna kill him don't kill my child just rescue him don't kill him don't take him no more I done been to two funerals I done lost a baby I done lost another son I don't want to lose another one just bring him back safe and sound uh-uh but they went out there 
they saw him riding through the fields and they seen him in hot pursuits and then the general of David's army said yeah there's Absalom with his hair waving in the wind and there was a bow that he went to Sotre under and the bow hung there and caught him by his hair and the young man lay dangling in the air and then the high man on the totem pole said this is our eye let us go and kill the young man and they took darting practice and took their lances and rode by him and used his body as a target and they just kept throwing until he just twisted in the wind they threw him until the blood gushed out they kept throwing every lance till it looked like target practice at a battle and battalion party here the young man Absalom lays dead dead all of these are David's children your sins will find you out it'll find you out in your conscience it'll find you out in your sleep your sleep will tell you you done wrong and I want to do better your sins will follow you right into eternity you can die on this side and you're reaping on the other side some men's sins go before them and other men's sins follow long behind but I want to reap while I'm in the land of the living so that when I lay down to die when the morning when I rise I don't want no trouble when I rise I want to reap what I sow on this side I want the Lord to do what he has to do but all I want him to do really is to save me one young man and ask him ask a preacher he said listen young man to the young man the preacher said if you wanted God to do one thing for you what would you have him to do he said I'd have him make me all over I'd have him make me like I really wanted to be made I'd have him give me the right kind of spirit the right kind of mind the right kind of godly attitude I think the young man is right I think he's real true true to sound report if I wanted anything this morning I would want God to make me pleasing in his sight that ought to be everybody's request cause your sin will find you out you may not want to sin but you got a fallen appetite if you don't have the Holy Ghost you're a sinner from birth if you got the Holy Ghost you're struggling every day to make it up the King's Highway you're doing everything you can not to let it anything get between you uh, and your Jesus uh, you're trying to move mama uh, and father out of the way uh, trying to move sister and brother uh, out on the way so that your life uh, can be pleasing to the Lord uh, I want the Lord uh, it ought to be your request uh, Lord make me uh, make me what you want me to be uh, creating me uh, a clean heart oh God and renew a right spirit within me a farmer a few months ago killed another farmer he killed him and chained him down to a wood a piece of bark on a tree the tree stopped weight the body down to the point the man sold his farm they never found out what happened to the other farmer but your sin will find ya the young man made money sold his farm and moved on he got sick and was in the hospital the famine hit Kansas the riverbeds dried up down at the bottom of the river the new owner saw a 
skeleton uh, nailed down to a piece of tree trunk uh, and they went there to investigate it uh, they found out that this was the missing fun uh, it may not come just tomorrow uh, and it may not come two weeks later uh, but your sin will find you uh, but you can cry out this morning uh, Lord make me over uh, fix me up Lord uh, save my soul uh, wash me Lord uh, and make me clean uh, whatever you got to do do it uh, cause I want to be right uh, I want to be clean uh, and I want to be holy uh, Lord uh, if you find anything in my life uh, that should not be uh, I want you to take it out uh, and strengthen me uh, strengthen me with the Holy Ghost uh, strengthen me with your word uh, strengthen me with the Bible teaching uh, strengthen me with your faith principles uh, strengthen me with your oracles uh, strengthen me with your holy laws uh, whatever you find in me uh, that should not be uh, take it out uh, make me over uh, I am the clay uh, and you are the potter uh, Lord fashion me uh, fashion me to your design uh, I don't want to be lost uh, I don't want sin to get in my way uh, I don't want it to come up again uh, I want you to forgive me uh, I want you to help me live right uh, plant my feet uh, on a solid foundation now I want you to order my steps uh, guide my footsteps uh, so I be what you want me to be uh, I walk up right before you uh, I do what you want me to do uh, Lord just make me over uh, I'm tired of being a liar uh, I'm tired of being a cheat uh, I'm tired of being a homemonger uh, I'm tired of being a doctor uh, I'm tired of being a fornicator uh, but you you got the power uh, to make me over. Uh, you got the strength uh, to sanctify my soul. Uh, you can wash me uh, with the washing of your word. Uh, you can cleanse me uh, with your holy power. Uh, you can set the fire of the Holy Ghost on me uh, and it'll burn out uh, every iniquity. Uh, it'll burn out uh, every Every sin in my thought processes, Lord, do whatever you got to do. Take me wherever you got to take me. Go with me all the way to the journey, but make me over. Make me over. I don't like the way I talk. I don't like the way I walk. I don't like the things I do. But you got the power to make me over. I want to love like you love. I want to do what you want me to do. Make me over. You got to. My mama can't do it. You got to do it. My daddy can't do it. You got to do it. My sister loves me. But she ain't got the power. My preacher loves me. But he ain't got the power. My friends love me. But they don't have the power. Oh Lord. Oh Lord. Make me over. Make me over. Make me over. I need a change. A change. A change. A change. I need a change. I need a change. I need a change. 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 I need a change. A change. A change. A change. Oh Lord, make me. Make me over. Make me over. Make me over. I don't want to be what my friends want me to be. I don't want to be what my mama wants me to be. I don't want to be what my neighbor wants me to be. I want to be what you want 
made of me. Make me, make me, make me over. Help me, help me. Oh, yeah. oh, oh, oh. I need you, I need you, I need you, I need you. Yeah. Help me, make it. Help me, do it, do it Lord, work on me, work on me, work on me, work on me, it's not my father, it's not my sister, but it's me, I need you, I need you, I need you, yeah. He's the only one that can make us. You cannot sin successfully. You've got to reap what you sow. But all he can make us over can sin is there to tarnish us. The law is there to rescue us. He can make us over. God can make you over. He can make you over. He can make you until you do like the songwriter. I looked at my hands. And my hands look new. I looked at my feet. And my feet do too. I started to walk. I got a new walk. The place where I used to go. I don't go no more. The things I used to say, I don't say them. I don't say them. I don't say them. Make me own. He can make you. He can make you own. He can make you over until people recognize there's a change, a great change. There's a change, a great change. There's a change, a great change. God can make you. He can make you until people wonder. Till people have to ask one another, what happened to you? You look different. You talk different. You sound different. Where have you been? And you have to tell them, I met a man named Jesus. He changed me. He changed me. He changed me. He can make you over until your husband doesn't go to sleep at night. He wake you up and say, there's something different about you. Where have you been? Till the husband have to say to the wife, You've been to that sanctified church, haven't you? Oh, God can make you over. He can make you over. So my wife can recognize that her husband has been with Jesus. God can make you. He can make you over. We can't sin successfully. You'll never be able to get away with it. As long as God remains God, we'll never be able to get away. So why not? Why not just give your life to the Lord and say, Lord, make me over. 
I don't want to pay that kind of price. That was a high price David had to pay. His family. He lost a lot of members in his family. All because of his sin. Oh yeah, you say, well I'm not affecting anybody. I'm doing what I do in private. Sin is never private. It's contagious. It's a disease. It affects the innocent. It affects those that are not even involved. We just might as well do like David and say, Lord, create in me a clean heart. Renew in me a right spirit. But Lord, just don't cast me away from you. Let your spirit be with me now. Don't take your hands off of me. Don't take your hands out of my life. Be with me now. Forgive me. Forgive me, Lord. Just forgive me. There comes a time if we could just be quick to repent like David. God can help us. 